Hey team, my name's Cole. I'm a furniture refinisher based in Christchurch, New Zealand. I enjoy taking tired furniture and injecting it with a modern spin. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you've been here before, you know the drill. Let's jump straight into it. Here with another trusty marketplace find. 10 New Zealand dollars. You never really know what you're going to get with these pieces until you pick them up. This was a bit more than I bargained for. Nearly gave up on it, persevered. Very happy with the results. Hopefully you feel the same. In the past I've used paint stripper to get rid of the paint, I thought this time I'd try a heat gun. So I purchased one and gave it a whirl. I'm not entirely sure I'm using it in the most productive way, but from what I've seen on YouTube this is the gist of it. It did get a majority of the paint off, it was quite hard on the wrist, but less messy than it would be using paint stripper, not as expensive as you don't need to buy the paint stripper once you've got the gun you've got it, I think it was about $40. I also think maybe it's not quite as toxic, obviously paint stripper is pretty strong, although I'm sure heating paint up is giving off some kind of fumes also, so potentially equally just as bad for you, but definitely not as messy as paint stripper, you don't have to use the mineral spirits afterwards, so, you know, I'm not sure which I'd pick. More effective, probably the paint stripper, but, you know, weigh it up. Finally I managed to get rid of most of the paint to sort of see what was underneath and it wasn't great news. There were woodworm tracks pretty much everywhere. One of the front drawer faces was worse than the rest. One side of the drawer casing was worse than the other side. This bar across the bottom was pretty bad, it was pretty much all the way through. And the top had a little bit as well. But it wasn't until I got this primer off that I was really going to see how much damage I was dealing with, so I decided to get onto the sander and try and get rid of that primer. And as you can see, I ended up using paint stripper anyway. The sanding was just taking way too long, so I got a coat of paint stripper on and that primer came off really quickly, so I was really happy about that. Perhaps I should have just done that from the start, but anyways, hindsight, great thing. Now that a majority of that primer was gone, I could see sort of how much damage the woodwork had done. This was the worst on the casing, but the wood was still reasonably solid, so I wasn't too bothered about that. It was just going to take a bit to patch it up. But this piece here, it was just, it was too far gone. It was really eaten probably half of the way through, so I decided it was probably best just to get rid of it and replace it with something else.
I took a trip to the scrap corner to see if I could find something to replace what I'd just removed and I came across this thing. It held a mirror in place on a dresser that I'd worked on previously so I thought potentially I could use this. So basically this part would replace what I just removed and hopefully these pieces would make new legs, front legs anyway. So I measure it up, get it under the saw and hopefully it will fit in place. You wouldn't believe it. It literally fit straight in there. Like it just slotted straight in. Snug fit. It was meant to be. I didn't have to do any adjustments to the width. It was perfect. I'll take it. That's a win. Now I'm going to remove the lower part of this casing and use the offcuts of the frame to make some rear legs as well. So I'll just measure those up, cut the bottom off and attach those legs. I used the existing nail holes to screw in the, the new legs. There's already so many holes in this thing, I didn't want to drill any more. They're not pretty, but I'll patch them up later. So there's quite a few things here that need to be tidied up, but we'll just add those to the extremely long list. So it's now time to work on these woodworm tracks. What I'm doing is just trying to scrape out any primer that's left in there and also any sort of soft, loose wood that's surrounding the tracks. That way when I fill it and go to sand it, it doesn't sort of crumble away. I'm very confident this woodworm is very, very old as it was underneath the paint and it's inactive. But just to be safe, it's always good practice. I'm just going to treat the wood anyway with this No Bora, which is a product in New Zealand. I'm not too sure if you can get it this particular one in other parts of the world, but I'm sure you have your own brands over there. It's pretty easy to use, it's actually quite fun. Poke that little nozzle into the hole and hit play, and it sort of disperses the liquid out through the wood. You can also spray it directly onto the wood if that tickles your fancy. I'm going to try this Builders Fill, which is a new product that I've not tried before. New to me, not new to the world. It's been out there for years. But you basically add the hardener. The more hardener you add, the faster it will sort of harden. And get it straight on there. It is a funny pink colour. I added a little paint to try and get it to turn slightly more brown to match the wood. I wouldn't waste your time with that. It didn't really do anything. Once it dries, it all kind of dries the same colour anyway. Uh, which is completely different to the wood, so you sort of got to go in and um, and fix that up. But it was pretty easy to use actually. It spread really well. It was like icing a cake. So I do recommend that, uh, especially for the bigger gouges. It was yeah really easy. I've also got this other one, which is Remu is a native timber to New Zealand. So this particular one is supposed to be the colour of the wood that I'm actually working with at the moment. So yes, it is a little more brown than the the pink stuff I just used. But what I found was when this dried, it wasn't quite as hard. So when I sanded it, it kind of almost just sort of crumbled away. Whereas this builder's full was really, really quite solid. And once I sanded it, it was hard as rock. So I would use this over the other stuff for this particular work that I'm doing. So once I'd finished patching it all up, it really just looked like one 
hot mess. Uh, it was pretty horrendous, so I was pretty excited to get the sandpaper on and get all that stuff off. If only it was all that easy. Now it's time to work on the parts that had the really severe woodwork damage. As you can see, even once I stain it, it really just stands out like a sore thumb. So I was going to have to sit down with my paintbrush and my paint and try and make this thing look half decent. So as you can see, the third and lower drawer face needed quite a bit of attention, as did the left hand side of the casing and the top. It was in pretty bad condition. I was feeling really discouraged and kind of thought, oh, maybe this is it, it's not going to work out. I feel you buddy, that's exactly my thoughts. Food. So 24 hours later, I return to the project. I'm feeling a bit more energized, a bit more pumped. Give it another crack. So I start with a dark paint to cover up the lines. It doesn't look great like this, but you have to trust the process. So I dry it off and then I go in with the lighter paints. So I do layer by layer. So dark paint, lighter paints. And then actually what I do is I will sand it down. And when I sand it, I find that it kind of takes off that layer of sort of the rough layer of paint. And it helps blend the paint in with the timber in the background so it looks a bit more realistic. And then after that, I'll apply more stain. And I'll repeat that process as many times as I need to until I feel like the paintwork that I've done resembles timber. And I'll just show you that process one more time. So starting with the dark paint here, moving on to the light paint, then a sand and then a stain, and then I'll repeat the process until I'm happy. And while you watch that, I just want to say a massive thank you for all the support I've received with my channel. If there's any way you can support me for free, all you need to do, like, subscribe, share, comment, any of those things, free and a massive, massive help for me and my channel. I love doing this and I want to keep creating more content. So please, if you can do any of those things, that would be amazing. It all helps. Helps with the cause. Um, but anyway, back to the video. Get a new back on this bad boy. Just hitting in the brad nails. And then we're going to top this up with some beeswax. This is a product I haven't actually used before, but man, did it smell good. Went on really nice and gave the timber a really nice nourished look. And one thing that I'm constantly reminding myself of is that when you're refinishing furniture, it's not necessarily about making it look brand new again. Any little imperfection is just a sign of a previous life and you're just giving it a little bit longer to go, so don't be too hard on yourself. Beeswax is also really nice to use on the drawers as well, on the outside and the inside. Nice finishing touch. And to finish this piece off, I'm going to add some brass hardware. Alrighty team, let me know what you think of the final product in the comments. Until next time, take it easy.